First, give me just the news headline as, as to what these hearings are and what they could be about and the status of them. Well, I mean, basically, Mike, what this whole thing is, the commission and the ongoing abusive DOJ investigation is the perpetuation of the Robert Mueller probe. This is sort of Robert Mueller 2.0. They're hoping to drag this into 2022. They're hoping to highlight this as a political campaign issue, to hang any guilty pleas uh, around the necks of the so-called Sedition Caucus House members who, uh, you know, signed on to objecting to the certification of the electoral college vote and also any senators who are up for re-election. So that's really what this is all about. So the uh, the one six commission, I guess, would be sort of like the new House Intelligence, Senate Intelligence Committee. And then we have the DOJ, Merrick Garland and Lisa Monaco's DOJ acting as the extension of Robert Mueller, which shouldn't surprise anyone one since Lisa Monaco was Robert Mueller's chief of staff when he was uh, head of the FBI. So you could see how this is all wow. kind of pulls together. Yep. And as you say that, if, if I were a Democrat, that would make perfect sense to do, as you just said. So um, tell me about these 14,000 hours of footage that who's sitting on? So the Capitol building and grounds uh, is uh, surveyed by an extensive uh, camera security system. And so we found out a few months ago in an affidavit as the government continues to seek protection action orders for this video evidence that they're presenting in court that the U.S. Capitol Police uh, captured at least 14,000 hours. Now, Mike, that's just between the hours of noon and eight o'clock. So they have extensive footage that would show the public exactly what happened inside and outside the grounds that day, who was there before Trump's speech, um, who was not there, what happened inside and outside so the government, Capitol Police, DOJ, uh, and federal judges are signing off on protective orders to keep this video surveillance under seal. Now, what are they trying to hide? If this was an armed insurrection, the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War, as Joe Biden says, like Pearl Harbor, as Chuck Schumer says, I mean, we should see all the evidence then. And so uh, it's it's really uh, getting the attention of House lawmakers. We see now Representative Paul Gosar has uh, filed an amendment to funding bill for U.S. Capitol Police demanding that this footage be released. And I'm hoping that more media outlets and more uh, Republicans will start to push back on this. We deserve to see it. We pay for the surveillance system. We pay for the Capitol building and everyone in it. So to say that it's highly sensitive government material, which federal judges are saying, uh, is, is sort of preposterous. All right, so I got two questions on that. First, what would you hope to see or what, what do you think you would see in that footage? So I'm trying to f understand what that 14,000 hours could, uh, footage could be. But before that even, what's the, is there any, I'm trying to get benefit of the doubt before I go all in. Is there any legitimate like uh, court reason to not show it until all the trials are over or something like that? Like what argument are they giving for not releasing this? <laughs> Okay, so to your first point, Mike, I think it's really important to see who was on the Capitol grounds that morning, that day. Uh, you know, we were told that Trump incited this riot. The people left his speech, wouldn't have put people there till after two o'clock. But who was there that morning? We know from eyewitnesses account accounts that there were people assembled outside of the Capitol building that morning ready to cause trouble. So who were those people? How did they get there? Uh, where? How were they dressed? Like, how did this all really begin? What was happening in major parts of the building? You know, Mike, we at American Greatness released a clip that had never been seen before, which were protesters inside the building that day talking to Capitol. Yeah, we have it. Police officers, Julie, I, let me, yeah, let me, let me just cut you off right them. there. Cause we, yeah, let, let me cut yeah. you off here, Julie. Sorry, but we can just play it real quick. We have it. We have it right here. The police here are willing to work with us and cooperate peacefully, like our First Amendment allows. Gather more Americans under the condition that they will come and gather peacefully to discuss what needs to be done to save our country. Assault? You're not going to 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 assault?
we're going to be heard. Everybody, this must be peaceful. This has to be peaceful. We have the right to peacefully assemble. All right, what do you make of that? Well, it flies in the face of what we're told. Um, you know, the, the man, the organic QAnon shaman, as he's called Jacob Chansley, um, he was in the building that day. You see him talking to police officers. They followed him into the Senate gallery where he led people in prayer. He sat in Mike Pence's chair. Now, why wasn't he arrested? Why weren't those people arrested that day? Instead, they waited a few days. They arrested Jacob Chansley for a variety of crimes, including violent entry, well, how can you go past the point? It's clear that they thought that they were okay. And Mike, you know this, we've seen other videos where people were walking into the Capitol. They were staying behind the rope lines. They were taking photographs and selfies. Obviously these people thought that they were in a public building authorized by U.S. Capitol Police, D.C. Metro Police and others. Um, so it was almost seems like a setup. Why did they let all these people in? Why didn't they arrest them that day? And now you have this months long nationwide FBI manhunt where they're kicking down the doors of people's homes at pre-dawn raids, um, handcuffing them, interrogating them without their lawyers there to find out what in the world were you doing, uh, you know, standing outside the Capitol on January 6th. So I, that is what I think the totality of this video will show. The bad guys who were there, yes, who they were, how they got there, who they're associated with, but more importantly, hundreds of people who were there assembled peacefully, who did nothing wrong, and now are, are, are criminals, according to our Justice Department. Wow. That was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.